it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. like a host of blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. Okay, I'm Zamani. I'm staying at Truth Road. I'm 31 years. Okay, I'm Asand, I'm 14 years old. I, I, <coughs> what I do for a living, I go to school, that's all. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm 25 years of age. Uh, I current, I'm currently employed as an admin manager, uh, slash um, self-employed as well. I stay in Philippi East. Hi, this is Lucky from Nyanga too. Basically, I did my metric last year, so I'm sitting at home now, looking for school, looking for a job. So I'm a basically a determined guy and the DJ. Hi, I'm Sebonga. I'm 19 years old from Nyanga. I'm an ex-matriculant from Vitepo Mahai. Currently, I'm busy with community services. Hi, this is David. Um, I ain't got much voice in which I could describe myself than just by saying I'm a member of the TLC club, and I'm currently job-seeking at the moment because I finished my metric class year. so yeah, big ups. Hi, I'm Neo. I'm 20 years of age. I'm currently unemployed. I finished my matric in 2007. Hi, my name is Charlotte from Younger East. Um, I'm currently unemployed at the moment, but I'm busy finishing up my matric. Uh, hi, I'm Richmond. I stay at uh, Leolovo, Kubuletu. I'm uh, working as a handyman at Trident Steel in Blackheath. Somebody gets sick and then you go to a clinic. You have to stay there mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you come home without any medication. You must come tomorrow to come fetch your medication. You see, but you were sick the time you go there. And then you have to stay there all day. They don't attend to you. Maybe they attend to you and then they will tell you, come tomorrow for your medicine. You see, but you were there sick and they see you. They will just look at you and pass by. Just. I really don't understand why. A sick mother should stand at 30 o'clock in the morning with a sick child by the gate of the clinic. I really don't understand. And then when you say no, the sick got sick now. Like children do that, they sleep overnight and then wake up in the morning like really, really sick. So when you go at seven o'clock now, what, what are we doing all night with the sick child? You're like trying to tell them that no, she got badly now. So I decided, no, come tomorrow. Really, really, honestly speaking, the clinics, I've, I've seen somebody dying right next to me at the clinic. You know, somebody who, care, who, could, have, who could have been saved, do you understand? I mean, how do the nurses live if, if people die <laughs> and, and they've been shouting at the person? How can they say to you, you must walk yourself to the bed and they see that you've been shot and you've been, you've been crawling? I mean, there's no ways, you know? So stuff like that, I mean, service delivery in, in South Africa, really, it, it's mm -hmm. pathetic. For example, we have a clinic in Nyanga East, the service there is so slow. And speaking about attitude, the nurses there, they have a big problem with attitude. They, they don't respond to a problem fastly enough. And, they, and they, they, talk, they tell us that they have um, lack of resource of, of, of medicines for people, you know. So I would say they need to do something about that, you know. Now forgetting our schools, where there's many schools that doesn't have roofing above the head. Schools that are currently leaking at the moment and the government is still not doing anything about that. How are the, my question to the government is, how are the kids supposed to focus while the room is leaking? How are they supposed to uh, adjust their minds to what is being to told to them? You get teachers who fall in love with students and at the same time, you get the students, especially girls who fall pregnant. When they go to the school system, it's always blamed on the girls. Why didn't you say no? I mean, like you should have thought better because you're the younger one, even though he was old. Teachers do take advantage on girls, especially vulnerable girls. The students are mainly the one that makes most moves to the teachers. Whereas the teachers, as um, I could say a man in stand, has no advantage of what's going on. Um, he could easily get to choose by student, because a student is basically fresh and all that. <laughs> so we should not put the blame on teachers only, but the students too. <laughs> you give a point. The whole school knew about it, even the principal, but he wasn't doing anything about it. He was like, 
I'm telling you girls to button up. I'm telling you girls to buy long skirts and stuff like that. And it's easy for a teacher to make an, a move on you. I'm not saying it's always the teacher's fault, but it's like when you have a problem and you can't maybe tell your friend, you can only tell that teacher. It's not like his responsibility to take advantage of you because of the situation. My problem is the cops. Because of the thing is this, I think it was last Saturday. Ne? So they don't do their job, you know, exact, actually, I mean to say, like correct in a correct way or in a manner way. Because of last week Saturday, ne? I won't lie, I was drunk, but not that drunk. So they saw me, and then the other one, the other car that came to the back, it came straight to me when I was standing in the pavement, you know. So when I asked him, why do you come to me? And then he just drove past me, and then he stopped. And then he got off the car, he took out the spray gun and then he sprayed my eyes, you know. After that, he kicked me. They kicked me. I don't know how many they were, you know. So my problem is them, because they don't do their job in the correct way. What they do, they are going to the ship into the government's car, they are get, getting ladies with the government's car. Mm -hmm. They are not working yeah. while they're supposed to do what they are supposed to do for us, you know, as, the, as their community, you know. I'm currently staying alone, you know, in a, in a big house. So, um, you know, the guys around where I'm staying, they know that I'm staying alone. Um, I had, uh, you know, I had, I had, I had two dogs. Um, one of my dogs was stolen, so I had a female dog. Now, I came from work, like, um, I think it was around about seven o'clock. Uh, Fifteen minutes after that, uh, my dog was outside, obviously. Uh, I just heard a, a funny sound, a funny sound being made by my dog because it was, it was at night. So I, then I thought to myself, you know what, let me just go outside and see what's going on. Only to find out right next to the house, there's a guy on his knees uh, I, I, trying to obviously rape my dog. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it happens. It really happens. So what I did was, um, I think 30 minutes after that, after chasing the guy and I couldn't get him, then I went to the police station. Then when I got there, I obviously told my statement to the police. And you know, the one that I was reporting to, she started laughing. I, I mean, come on, I was in, I was in, I was in, I was in, I was in pain and I was in shock. You know, it, it, it's never happened in my life where an animal was actually uh, uh, raped or in front of me, do you understand? If, if what happened to your dog happened in the suburbs, they would, they would reply to that immediately with effective effective effect, you know? But since it happened in the township, who cares? Because the people, they, 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 they treat them as if they are like ruthless people, you know? Not people that are civilized, you know? So that's why I don't think it's about their sales, it's about because we live in a township so they don't care about us. It's just a dog, nothing more. It's just a dog, nothing more to do with a dog. So that's why they think like that, basically. But it's true, like, police are failing us. Because on Saturday, I mean Sunday, what happened was my cousin's sister got into a fight with a school friend. Fine, she came home bleeding, so we went to the police station. And this other lady was like, oh, it has to do with the guy, that's quite obvious. And she started laughing. And I'm standing there like, what's so funny? Because my cousin's like bleeding and she's laughing. We were at the police station for like an half an hour waiting for a police van. And the, the police guys were also told about what happened and they started laughing. They just looked at my cousin and they were like, it's obvious it was about a guy. What are we doing there if my cousin was fighting over a guy? It was on the 20th of last month when I came home from work, it was past five. I opened the front door but Obviously, I noticed this, something's funny. My microwave was stolen, my DVD was stolen, and only to find out the back door wasn't locked. I don't know who unlocked it. And then I go to report the case to the police. That, taken, that took me about an hour there, and then they said I must wait for the detective. They're still on the round. When they came, they asked me, and then I told them what I saw there. They drive with me home and then they see whatever they can see because there was enough evidence which they should have taken because there was a knife lying on the couch which that's the knife which was used to cut the, the microwave plug because my microwave is built in, is in a box so you can't took it out without cutting that plug out so the plug was cut and it was put on top of the stove but the knife 
which was used was on the couch. They see all that and then they said, okay, whenever I suspect somebody, I must go tell them. <laughs> what a chance. Well, how can I know? I, 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 I've been <laughs> home for the whole day. I came only past five. I left home past five and I came past five in the afternoon. But now I should know who have <laughs> taken those things there. So which means I must investigate myself. <laughs> Till today, I, sh I have just to buy me some more things. I must should not worry. I think it was um, on April, yeah. my, uh, my best friend was uh, raped and we went to the police, um, I think, yeah. So I asked my police, my, my friend asked me to go with her to the police station and they said, and my, my, um, my friend told what happened to, the, um, what happened to her and they never, um, they never even bothered to like, help her. They said we must go back home, that's all. I don't have a phone today through them. <laughs> through them. I'll put it that way. Because of I think on the on the second week of Feb, ne? or maybe of the, or maybe on the third week of February, I get I, I was robbed during the day. Daylight. And I I know those guys because I was busy with them years ago, you know. They were my friends. So they robbed me, they took my phone, you know. They took out the gun and then they said I must give me them my phone and then I give it to them, but because of, I know them. Fine, I went to the police station and report that. So the police, they said to me, let us go. And then we go, and then before we, we get to that bangalore, you know, I said to them, okay guys, let us just, just stop here because of, I don't want those guys to see the van so that they can run. Just stop here and then we will go, I will go with you and, sh and show you the house of that bangalore. They said, okay, fine. They asked me, what are you going to say there? I, I said to them, I'm going to say that, that Guys, give me back my phone, that's all. So I went there without anything, without even a, 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 even a stick of matches in my pocket, you know, in order to defend myself, you know. But those guys having a gun, you know. So I went there. I thought, I think that I stand there for more than 10 minutes. And then when I, go, when I look at my left hand side, nobody was, to, nobody was with me. I was alone there. So I don't know where were they. I really don't know. You know, like when they tell the police what happened, and then you, t you show them the culprits, they like they don't go and do their job. You know, they say no. We they fear for their lives because they're also human beings. So what's wrong if we take the law in our own hands? Why can't we take the law into our own hands if they if they fear their lives? It is the best way because you get cops who fail you. You try by all means to do everything by the book, and then they'll like look at you as if you're crazy, and then when you do something crazy, they quick to arrest you. And cops are quick to arrest and assault people. That's true. Yeah. The cops of, t of today are mostly um, friends with gangsters. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. <coughs> They're friends with the gangsters. Therefore, um, they, um, they do not take um, steps in hand like um, rule. There's a, a certain rule, the cop rule. You have to re um, arrest the person, read their routes, um, that kind of line. But mostly seeing that um, they're basically friends with that person who is a gangster, who does illegal things, mining, all that. Um, they tend um, to like, um, what can I say, um, let them go. I know government is failing us and the police are doing anything about that as well. But solving violence with violence, it's another thing. Like the whole system is failing <coughs> us, so what are we supposed to do? It's like you try by all means to do everything by the book, but government is failing us. The reason why we have riots nowadays is because to send a message to the government, hey, we're waiting, what's up? I think it's so long. That's why we're having riots. There was a, a riot recently, yesterday in Yanga East, in um, next, close to Mau Mau. I think you have Kondo Square. Kondo Kondo Square. Square. Yeah, there was a riot about houses, you know. So I think that the government they just want to get votes from people, promising, giving them empty promises. You know, that's 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 what it's all about, getting power and abusing it. Yes, we got to vote to vote for something else, but the promises that they make, you feel as if no, I got to vote for them because that promise it means a lot to me, especially to people that live in shacks. But at the end of the day, they don't get what they want, what what they they what they are promised by the government. I personally don't blame the government because what I believe is, is, is that um, the government is basically doing everything that it can. I wouldn't really blame the government because we really are honestly not missing them halfway. 
I mean, we all have to stand up for ourselves as well. We have to get up and work for ourselves, knowing what we will do today will affect us as a better way tomorrow. Not doing something that you will say at the end of the day, no, the government must provide for me. He is failing us in terms of the police stations, not helping us in, in a civil manner and the clinics, but with the jobs and the housings, it's not, I wouldn't really blame it. I wouldn't really like focus on that, saying that it's the government's fault. In my dream basically is to eradicate poverty and become a successful individual amongst others and to help most. I would like to be very successful in life and uh, coming from a, a hard back background and I'd really like to give back to my community and I'm very determined about that and I will. Well basically my dream is not to be rich but to, to be successful and see the world changing, see, looking at South Africa being changing and I hope this 20 times World Cup is going to make us change. My dream is to be successful in life yeah, and yeah, in order to change things I want to be part of that you know, and give back to my community yeah, as also mm -hmm. and try to change the life of the township, you know, because most of the, most of the kids that are growing up, they want to be like these hardcore gangsters, they want to be like, you know, in jail and all that. So I want to give them a, a, another, sp another perspective of life. To be a millionaire <laughs> or to, to work hard to become a millionaire or to help, like, be, or me to help people, you know. Oh my. <laughs> my dream is to give every child, uh, like poor, every poor child, to give uh, but out their bursaries and help children, poor children. Yeah. I'd love to be a businesswoman. I would like to be a nurse <laughs> and show the clinics what must be done to the sick people. I just want to provide uh, for my kids so that they mustn't go through this hardship I've gone through all these 50 years. You see, I just want to by all means and give them a better future. Yeah.